hey, welcome to the first part of our Murder at Castle Nathria Achievement Hunter series. I honestly thought I'd see you sooner with a Sunken City Mystery Achievement walkthrough, but perhaps Mystery Achievements were only a Year of the Griffin thing? Mm. Regardless, we're back with a buffet of quick, efficient, and occasionally wacky decks to securely plant these achievements into your journal without us being too chatty. Let's get into it. Huh, this should be interesting. As with previous guides, we'll introduce one standard and one wild deck per achievement. And if you're looking to charge through a specific achievement, there are timestamps and deck codes for each achievement we'll cover in this video's description and the comments section. Now, let's begin disposing of any barriers to completing these achievements. Let's get going with the one and done achievement for Demon Hunters with Crixus the Voracious. Unlike Sunken City, many of the legendaries from Castle Nathria lack tribal tags, so they can't be discovered by Amalgam of the Deep. However, there's a chance you can discover them in duels and arena buckets if you don't own a copy of them. For this achievement, all you have to do is draw a bunch of cards and play Crixus once you have 9 cards in hand. So you discard the other 8 cards when you play them. That's it! As Crixus is the only death rattle minion in both of these decks, Tusk Piercer can help ensure he's in your hand by the time you get to 9 cards. Best of luck voraciously tearing through this achievement. At 3 cards a swing with Magnifying Glaive, drawing 30 cards shouldn't take too long. In the ideal case, that is. Without a Weapon Tutor to draw the Glaives into hand, getting swift progress on this calls for a balance of card draw and cheap cards to dump from your hand. While the decks we have here have a low mana curve, they also run cards to help get or equip additional Glaives, Nobleman and Horde Pillager. Both of these minions can get in the way of drawing 3 cards per swing, but they can also give you a chance to draw 6 extra cards. So feel free to drop them for other cheap cards if they're not working out, but they did their job for us quite quickly. Have fun making lots of sharp observations. With the recent buffs to Relic of Extinction and the Relic Vault, the Demon Hunter Relic Package feels pretty good in a number of different deck archetypes. Both the decks here were designed to knock out the achievement as quickly as possible, rather than win a bunch. However, they did both boast over a 50% win rate during our small sample size test games. The standard deck aims at discovering extra copies of relics from the relatively small spell pool or with Dispossessed Soul, and the wild deck leans on Educated Elik and Zai to provide additional relics each game. Sadly, although Artificer Zymox claims to cast relics for us as the achievement demands, he doesn't provide any progress himself. However, we burned through 100 relics much faster than originally expected, so it shouldn't take too long for you to acquire your own fully stocked museum. Good luck. With only 2 durability per location, and no reliable way to get extra copies of Hedge Maze, aside from like getting lucky with Moonlit Guidance, Triggering 75 death rattles with Hedge Maze does take a while. You could just slap a bunch of cheap death rattle minions, which draw, into a deck with the mazes and force your way through it, but we decided to build some fun decks to make the grind a bit more pleasant. Yes, there are a number of low rolls from the Masked Reveler in both decks, but we wanted to be sure you have plenty of ways to ensure progress 
with the hedge maze each time you're able to play it. And there are really fun high rolls in both decks. It's been a while since we used Stalag and Fugen to flood the board with 11-11 Thaddeuses. And Greybow is stupidly fun. Enjoy trapping opponents within an endless maze of death rattles. So yeah, uh, at the time of making this guide, the flower power achievement is very badly bugged. Both of the decks here purposefully avoid using Wildheart Guff, Jerry Rig Carpenter, and Raid Negotiator, all of which I was excited to use to knock this one out at light speed. But even completing the conditions of the achievement multiple times with the decks shown here, it still hasn't given credit for the achievement. We're going ahead and sharing both of these decks before the bug gets fixed in case the achievement still requires avoiding cards like the ones we mentioned, even after Blizzard fixes their game. Though I will note that since Convoke the Spirits is the only 10 cost spell for druids in standard at the moment, I'd recommend tackling this in wild if you have the spells. Hopefully all of us will be able to capture this flower power before too long. Topior the Shrubagazor. That is a very um unique card with a delightful name. If you have a copy, chucking Topior into a deck with some decent mana ramp and a ton of nature spells will let you knock this out quite quickly. 200 sounds like a lot, but it's actually not that bad, especially if you get extra copies with Zola. Bran works too, but we had better results with Zola. Since Topior is a dragon, it is possible to discover a copy from Amalgam of the Deep. But getting to 200 Welpagazors with that many dragons in deck after a mid-game discovery would be quite the uphill marathon. Brutal mode engaged. Good luck if you do go that route. And if you do have Topior, have fun entangling your opponents with hundreds of lifelike? Welpagazors. For Huntsman's best friend, if you draw Altamore early or yank him into your hand with Talon, this achievement is extremely simple to finish, and it lends itself to dual progress with the Wild Seeds as they serve as great fuel to infuse him. If Altamore has dodged your collection and you don't want to search for him in arenas or duels buckets, it is possible to get copies of him from opponents with Vanessa Van Cleef or Faceless Manipulator and Shadow Step. What's nice about those combos is that you likely won't have to infuse Altamore yourself, as he stays infused if they infused him. But you do have to find an opponent playing him manage to copy him, and survive long enough to play him yourself. While not a strategy I'd recommend for grindy achievements, it's a consideration for one and done achievements like this. However you go about it, best of luck summoning all of Altamore's best friends. As a 3-5 with Rush, Stonebound Gargon feels quite efficient at taking down enemy minions, particularly when infused, and buffs from Doggy Biscuit, Dire Frenzy, and even the Uldoom quest do improve its ability to rip through opponents' boards. And Selective Breeder, Devouring Swarm, Zola, Stitch Tracker, and Dire Frenzy are great at providing reinforcements to your army of Gargons to rush through this. Serpent Bloom was a consideration for inclusion, but felt completely unnecessary across the few games it took to complete this. Have fun utterly demolishing aggro decks for this one. 
Summoning 300 dormant wild seeds is a major task, and it will take quite a few games. But it's a ton of fun to summon four wild seeds with a couple waking up right away from a single wild spirits after a twin bow terror coil prepares for the board swing. Zola often gets an extra Aralon or Spirit Poacher, but she can be used on a spirit itself in a pinch. Also, Queen Ashara's Ring and Educated Elix are a decent way to cast a few extra Wild Seed generators as well. So while it does take quite a few games to knock this out, it didn't really feel like a major grind to cultivate this one. Hopefully, it feels the same way for you too. When the Skeleton Mage cards were introduced, I honestly expected an achievement asking us to trigger two to 400 death rattles. I'm pretty sure I would have preferred that to some of the actual grindy achievements. But anyways, with Nightcloak Sanctum and additional copies of Cold Case and Deathborn, generated or cast by Grey Sage Parrot, you don't even need Kel'Thuzad to handily double the requirement for this achievement in a single game. I almost wish this one did have a higher requirement so that we'd have a great excuse to play it a bunch more. Alas, several less exciting archetypes call for grinding. But this one is fun. So enjoy it. Dealing 150 damage with a 3 damage spell would take quite a while to complete if you went at it head on. But you know that's not how we do things here. Quest Mage in Standard felt pretty good with a number of spell generation minions to serve as fodder for infusing Frozen Touch while giving us extra copies of it or whatever spell we needed to advance the quest. And the payoff was two additional damage per touch to stack alongside Guild Trader's effect. But in Wild, a good game with Mozaki will often end with a 1-2 punch of 16 and then 17 damage frozen touches. Not bad. Good luck shattering this one quickly as well. Sadly, the final mage achievement isn't so swift to complete. Unless you face a few extremely cooperative opponents? Unsurprisingly, most opponents will do whatever they can to remove Orion from the board as quickly as possible while triggering as few secrets as possible and failing to do so after a secret or two is generated, they concede. All I can recommend for this one is that you try pairing Orion with a secret or two likely to trigger from the way the opponent is likely to try to kill him, and hope for the best. Earlier versions of the wild deck included two copies of Explosive Runes and a second Ice Block, in place of Flame Ward and Netherwind Portal. And while that deck had a phenomenal win rate, 71% across 17 games, it very rarely got progress before opponents conceded. The version here has a far lower win rate, but averaged a little over two points of progress per game. It's a frustrating grind, highly dependent on your opponents playing into it, but if you keep at it, you'll finish the tour eventually. Best of luck. After grinding through that mansion manager achievement, you deserve a promotion. There are several ways to come at this one. Buffing a Silver Hand Recruit donated to your hand from Sinful Souschef works pretty well, particularly if Cariel's Hero Power lands on it, but a couple Garden's Graces into a promotion works quite well as well. Or 
granting a blessing of authority into a promotion over in Wild works wonders as well. While there are certainly a few dozen other ways to pull it off as well, each of these decks has several ways to piece together a very sizable benefits package without too much hassle. You've got this. Figuring out good strategies for this next achievement was a bit strange. The only way for a paladin to get more than 10 damage from a divine toll is to have a spell damage minion on the board. But if you have a minion on the board, it could buff them rather than hit the enemy minions. This standard deck uses Primordial Protector to draw Divine Toll consistently while possibly discovering extra copies from Battle Vicar and Muckborn Servant while resorting to a maximum of 10 damage per toll. The Wild deck counts on pulling Malagos onto the board with Cavalry Horn and getting 7 damage each time a shot goes into an enemy minion. Without any previous progress, it took 5 games with Malagos to complete this in its entirety. The win rate was low, but it was finished very quickly. Have fun forcing a massive toll onto your opponents. Pure Paladin is a pretty fun deck, with the Countess's Invitations as a nice reward for the deck restriction. You could just play a meta version of the deck enough times to get the Countess, play her out six times, and drop the legendaries you got for completion. And hey, Muckborn Servant might get you an extra copy of her. It'd take a while, but it would likely be pretty fun. But I'm greedy. Three invitations per game isn't nearly enough. Zola, and maybe Bran, can help with that. As Zola and Bran are neutral, they can't be in the deck when we play the Countess. But without any other minions in the decks, and Vitality Surge and Call to Adventure to yank them from the deck, that was never really a problem. The real challenge was making enough space in hand for all the invitations. And yes, some opponents will kill the Countess before Zola gets to copy her. But surely, one of the legendaries you discover will merit an extra copy by Zola, right? Enjoy this one. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, drop a like. Sufficient promotion by viewers like you will give YouTube a solid alibi for recommending this guide to voracious achievement hunters. We're planning to poach the rest of the Castle Nathri achievements too, so be sure to check back or subscribe so that you don't have to navigate through a maze of other content to find future videos. Definitely share any questions or suggestions you have in the comments. Our Twitch channel has a new address at twitch.tv forward slash new bold VA, but the stream is on an indefinite hiatus as I begin to focus more on my audiobook narration and voice acting career. If you'd like to support me along the journey of developing into a professional narrator and voice actor, subscribing to my second channel, linked in the description and comments, will help immensely. There's no content on the channel yet, but starting next month, I'll be releasing one edited, copyright-free story narration about once a month. The stories will be from Sherlock Holmes, seasonally appropriate content, or viewer requested stories. But yeah, that's all I've got for you today. So remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day. Welcome to Revendreth.